Hey guys, Curly Susie here from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. In today's quick video, I'm going to talk all about postpartum hair loss. Yeah. I know it's probably hard to tell by just looking at my hair because I have so much hair um, that I am currently going through postpartum hair loss. For those of you who don't watch my channel on a regular basis, I have two little boys. One of them is three years old and one of them is four months old. With both of my sons, at exactly the three month postpartum mark, my hair started falling out in clumps. If you are somebody that gets really grossed out by balls of hair in the shower, then you might not want to continue watching this video because I am going to actually show you the hair loss that I experienced over the last couple of days. My postpartum hair loss started at exactly the three month mark um, with both of my children and it is really starting to ramp up right now. When I get in the shower now and either co-wash or wash my hair, my hair is coming out in like two big handfuls. So when I'm raking products through my hair, um, I would say I'm losing approximately eight times the amount of hair that I normally lose. I'm washing my hair a little bit more often just because I was curious to see how much hair I was losing daily and I'm going to insert a clip right now of how much hair I lost when I washed my hair yesterday and how much hair I lost when I washed my hair this morning. And guys, this is crazy for me because just look at it and multiply it by a week, like over the course of a week, I'm losing a ton of hair. I think that's enough of like a backstory. And now I just want to get into the things that I think that you definitely should try to do. The number one thing that you should be trying to do right now is just take care of your overall health in general. So make sure that you're eating proper meals, that you are drinking lots of water, that you're getting little bits of exercise, that you're eating a diet that has, you know, all the food groups, carbohydrates, fats, and protein, um, and that you're trying to get as much sleep as possible. And if this is your first baby, <laughs> especially you're probably rolling your eyes at me right now because I know that it is tough to nap and to sleep um, and to get ample sleep. That's better. Um, so try to get as much sleep as you can. Like I said, I know that's hard sometimes. Make sure you're eating properly um, and just taking care of yourself in general. The second thing that I'm going to suggest you do is just to be very gentle with your hair. So again, following the curly girl method is how I am very gentle with my hair. If you search this video and you don't have curly hair, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. But basically, I try not to use shampoos that have harsh sulfates in them. I try to shampoo my hair less often. I don't put my hair in hairstyles that cause breakage. I use silk scrunchies. I sleep on a silk pill pillowcase. You name it. I do as much as I can. Um, I try not to use heat on my hair. I do as much as I can to try to um, prevent breakage at all costs. Um, and maybe if you're somebody that heat styles your hair all the time, this is a great opportunity for you to just be a little bit more gentle and more kind to your hair. And I think that's going to help with the overall look of your hair for sure. The third thing that I'm going to recommend, and this is again challenging as a new mom, is just to try not to be stressed out, especially specifically as it comes to your hair and your hair loss and any body changes that you experience that you are maybe self-conscious about right now. Um, it's all about self-care, taking care of yourself, taking care of your hair. Um, but don't be hard on yourself. Your body has gone through a ton. You just created a human who are you are now taking care of 24-7. And stress definitely affects your skin and your hair um, and your body in a lot of negative ways. So try um, as hard as you can to be good to yourself and to just know that this is a phase in your life that has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and eventually um, your hair will grow back and you will feel a lot more like yourself. So now I want to talk about the things that I definitely think you should not do when you're experiencing postpartum hair loss. And this comes from my own experience and the experience of some of my friends and family members who have also gone through this. And we want you to hopefully learn from some of our mistakes. So the number one thing that I think that you should not do when you're experiencing postpartum hair loss is to go out and spend money on products specifically like shampoo and conditioners that are trying to take advantage of the fact that you're stressed out and you're worried about your hair um, and try to sell you shampoos and conditioners that are apparently specifically for hair loss um, and 
they over overcharge for them. I'm not going to mention any brands, but my sister-in-law had kids before I did and she had real bad postpartum hair loss and she was very stressed out about it. So I thought I would be a good sister-in-law and I went out and I bought her um, a shampoo and conditioner system. It was something that was really popular on social media probably three or four years ago and kind of still is. You might know what I'm talking about. And I think I spent about a hundred and forty five dollars or something crazy like that on this shampoo and conditioner and serum for her because at the time I really didn't know very much about hair and not that I know that much more now I mean I'm not a professional stylist I'm not a dermatologist but just knowing what I know there is nothing topically that you can put on your hair that is going to reverse the postpartum hair loss and so that kind of stuff just kind of makes me mad I'm mad at myself for spending hundred and forty dollars on something that now I realize is kind of a scam it's not going to help your hair um, and I'm mad at product companies who target people who are vulnerable because they're going through these difficult issues with their hair and charging an arm and a leg for shampoo and conditioner that's not going to make a difference. So that was like a little bit of a rant. I just don't want you to go out and waste your money. Um, another thing I want to mention too is like um, supplements and hair growth vitamins and things like that. So I do take hair growth vitamins. I was taking prenatal vitamins for a long time. If you're already taking your prenatal vitamins or if you stop taking them, then I do advise you to continue to take them, especially if you're breastfeeding and you're not eating properly. I definitely think it's a good idea for you to continue to take your vitamins and your doctor will tell you that while you're breastfeeding, you should continue to take vitamins. And that may help a little bit. I'm not 100% sure. Again, the research on this is very limited, but what I'm advising you to do is do not go out and spend a bunch of money on supplements or vitamins that are claiming that they're gonna make your hair grow back. Basically, I just don't want you to waste your money on anything um, that is claiming it's going to reverse your postpartum hair loss when I know from experience and through research and talking to other women that the only thing that's really gonna make the biggest difference is time. The next thing on my do not list is do not stop breastfeeding because you think that breastfeeding is directly related to the postpartum hair loss. That is a total myth. Um, I'm not a dermatologist, but there's a lot of available research out there and they have definitely debunked the myth that the hair loss is directly related to breastfeeding. Women who formula feed their babies experience postpartum hair loss and women who breastfeed their babies experience postpartum hair loss. So if breastfeeding is something that's working really well for you, then don't feel like you have to stop because you think that that is definitely what's making your hair follow because it is not. One thing that I will mention is that if you are breastfeeding, you definitely need to eat enough calories and you have to try to consume a healthy diet because breastfeeding burns a lot of calories and takes a lot of energy from you. Um, so I guess, again, with the general theme of this video, try to take good care of yourself um, and eat a healthy, balanced diet and try to exercise when you can. And again, I know that that is almost impossible uh, when you have a baby. The last thing that I'm going to tell you not to do is don't get so frustrated with your hair that you decide to cut all of your hair off. I know this from experience that this, like many things, has a beginning, a middle, and an end and maybe you are at the peak of your hair loss right now and it's just about to get better. And I know that I told you guys that time is really the only thing that is going to start to reverse this hair loss. Um, and that is absolutely what the research shows. So try to give yourself lots of time. And I know some of you are gonna ask like how much time? Everybody is really different. But in general terms, the hair loss usually begins around the three month postpartum mark or somewhere between three and six months postpartum. And then once your baby is approximately a year old, that's when most women notice that their hair starts to grow back and return to normal. When your hair does start to grow back, you might experience another problem. And that is what I definitely experienced, especially in the two areas of my hair that really, really thinned out. Um, I started to get lots of regrowth and little springs of baby hair, which when you have curly hair, makes your hair look really, really frizzy. And so I definitely had to use more product at my roots and think of creative ways to style my hair to kind of conceal this part of my hair. And the fact that my bangs kind of 
fall in the front of my face helps me out a lot. When I was exercising and wearing my hair back in a ponytail, I would wear like a thick headband just to cover these two areas for a little while. And really before I knew it, it started to grow back and I didn't have to keep doing that anymore. If you search this video because you're going through postpartum hair loss, I hope that this little chit chat kind of help to normalize it and make you feel a little bit better and maybe less frustrated with the fact that your hair is falling out right now. Um, again, I am not a dermatologist and so if you have any type of suspicions that your hair loss is a lot greater than what I'm describing um, or if you feel generally unwell or if you are not postpartum and you're experiencing gross hair loss, then I do advise that you go see your doctor or a dermatologist because they are the only people who can properly diagnose um, the actual cause of your hair loss. I'm gonna wrap this video up here. I do plan on doing an update video at the probably between the six and nine month postpartum mark because that's when I feel like my hair will be at the peak of the hair loss. Um, and I will show you guys the hairline and the patches of my hair that are thinning and just chit chat about everything that's been going on over the last couple of months. But anyway, I hope this video was at least helpful if you're going through the same thing. If you liked it, you can give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you can give it a big old thumbs down. If you like curly hair content, then subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in like mommy and lifestyle content, I just started a brand new channel. It's called Straight Up Susie. I'm doing a vlog today and I'm going to be posting that probably this evening before I go to bed. But anyway, if you're interested in that, then check out that channel. I'll link it in the description box. Um, but either way, I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.